Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce you to transformations using matrices. So we're going to look at some linear transformations, um, some new notation to do with them, and how we can use matrices to help us apply these transformations to points and shapes. So I'll timestamp the different parts of the video below so you can skip through to whichever part you want to see. And if the video is useful, then please do like and subscribe. So first, let's see what we mean by linear transformation. Uh, and to do this, we're first going to look at perhaps a new way of describing transformations specifically in two dimensions. Okay, So we could describe a transformation in 2D like so. We could say the transformation T, and I'm using the letter T because it stands for transformation, but I could have used any letter I like. So my transformation T is going to be one such that it takes any given point, x, y, okay, and it maps it to a new point. Now the transformation I want to make here is one where it doubles the x-coordinate and doubles the y-coordinate. So this is a way we can write a transformation, okay, like so. And really we're just defining a transformation by taking a generic point, x, y, okay, and describing how it is transformed. And this new transformed point we call the image, okay, so when you hear the word image we're talking about the transformed point. And so the way this transformation would work is let's look at the point, say, 2, 5 under this transformation. Well, the transformation T would take our point 2, 5, and it would map it to a new point, which would be 4, 10. Okay, and so this is a way we can describe transformations. Now, what makes it a linear transformation? Well, it's linear because both the X and Y component of, of the transformation, okay, um, are both all linear terms. Okay, so we couldn't have, for example, 2x squared and 2y cubed because these are no longer linear terms and it's no longer a linear transformation. Okay, so it must, whoops, it must be a linear term in our transformation. Now it turns out that all of these tr linear transformations can actually be represented as matrices. Okay, and we're going to look at how we can find these and the different types of uh, matrix transformations we need to know a bit later on. But for now, let's take a look at how this works. So here we need to find the image of the triangle under the transformation 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, or M. Now the way this transformation is going to work is we're going to take each of the vertices of our triangle, so A, B, and C, and multiply it by the matrix M. So let's do that. So we're going to take our matrix M, which is this matrix here, and let's multiply it by the uh, vertex A. And I'm going to write this in a column vector form. Well, when we do this, we get the point negative 1, negative 2. So that tells me under the transformation M, the point A is mapped to a new point, say A prime, with the coordinates negative 1, negative 2. We could then do this for point B and point C. But a quicker way to do this would be to extend this column vector and turn it into a matrix where the columns are the vertices of our shape. So the second column could be the vertex B, so it's going to have the points 3 and 1. And the third column could have the entries 2, 4 to represent the point C. Let's multiply out this matrix uh, and we're going to get negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 2. And let me move this out of the way so I've got a bit more space. Let's now um, sketch onto our graph each of these new coordinates. So we've got negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 2. And so you can see we've transformed this triangle to a new one over here. So this matrix here, I'll tell you, actually represents a reflection in the line y equals negative x. Okay, hopefully you can see that there. And so if we wanted to use our other notation, this notation up here, we could actually describe this transformation like so. We could say it's a transformation, say T, where it takes any given points, X and Y, and maps them to a new point, which has the coordinates negative Y, negative X. And you can see for yourself that this works. So in the next video, we'll see how we can find a transformation matrix to describe whatever sort of transformation we're looking for. And later on, we'll look at the different types of transformations we can apply using matrices. But if this video was useful, then please do like and subscribe and go over to my channel where I've got loads of other A-level maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.